Hello everybody, welcome to Jackson Hole, my home, the beloved Snake River, where I fish for the native cutthroat trout. I invited my friend John Barr to come join me as we went after the native Snake River cutthroat trout. John was here in Jackson Hole to film production for Cabela's along with my friend Mike Lawson called Our Favorite Flies and How to Fish Them. During the time of the production we fished Henry Fork River and the South Fork River in Idaho and then we came back over the mountains to Jackson Hole and fished the snake. I was introducing John to the wily Snake River Cutthroat. Join us for a few minutes of I always tell people when I first started guiding, leave it. No matter how bad the cast is, leave it long enough for a fish to see it and come take it. Always fish out a bad cast. Absolutely. I've seen it catch fish so many times and you just have to always fish a bad cast. You want to rip it out of there and blow it. Now you have your copper, John, and you know it's the hottest fly right now in uh, America. Let's go up in here uh, for nymphs. But back in the 70s, my Royal Humping was the hottest fly, and it's too bad there wasn't a royalty program on that, because that would have been spectacular. Now I'm going to lay that up. Again, we're using two flies. I know you like to use two dry flies, and I'm, I'm a big fan of the two dry flies. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm kind of a combo guy, and uh, I like to give them two different looks. Comment on a point you made earlier about how the flies get smaller and Ball, I think that's, that's, a, that's a good general rule all over, probably everywhere. And I know out in the west, but later in the year you get the smaller the flies. And we'll start out in the spring with uh, 16 p and a little later on. And then the bait is by this time of year are 22s and 24s, and the PMDs are 18s. And, yep. And it, it, it's just the nature of the beast. The tri trichos every week they seem like they get smaller. You start off maybe with a 18 by the end of the trico cycle, you know, season, you're down to 24s, 26s. We have the same problem. Smaller. We have the same problem with uh, uh, PMDs. By the time they come to late fall, we, uh, we get PMDs right into the first week of October. Yeah. They get to be like 20s, and we have to fish them out of a float boat. Oh. And we still have some fall stones. And, I'm going to recommend that you go back down there and put one of those fall stones on and run it over that fish that didn't take. New water here looks pretty good. A little structure, a little cover. I think we're gonna pull something out of here. Good drift. Just need... I like it when I can call my fish. It's funny that fish came up, looked at the dry, dove back down, and took the nymph. Makes me feel good about myself. Oh, we have issues. Oh, beautiful little fish. Small spot, it looked like peppered with fine grain pepper. Pretty fish, pretty fish. I'm gonna get his mama. I'm gonna get some more fish in here. Claim, uh, okay, let's see if we can see any fish in here. This is the kind of place that you might catch, uh, one, it's a one fish little run. What happens is these big fish come in here and they kind of take over this, hoping to catch, uh, now you would say, we were talking about betas, you saw betas, you know what they want in here? This is where we get the drakes. We get a fall uh, drake that comes out. Where 
you know, we just saw a fish when we came up to that bush. They're going to go into these off banks here, off okay. the main, they, like over along the side. Now in the summertime, they'll be tucked up against the banks. Okay. But now they're going to be looking for places that can catch the betas. Okay, so They've been used to fighting water all summer, now they're going to take it easy. So the fish aren't necessarily tucked up, all good fish aren't up under banks. They can no, be out, out the they top. would have been three weeks ago. Okay. But th one of the reasons, uh, you know, we tie the flies the way we do, there's so much fast water, like you have in Colorado, where you need to see the fly. Yeah. And I'll tell you, it's hard to see. You, know, you can imagine a 22 in there. It would be pretty difficult to see. It's right in there. Now, what, why I have that indicator fly is that because we're getting shade now in the fall, that's a big problem after 4 o'clock. And I can pick that up, then I can pick the little 18 up behind it. Sure. So I like to fish. Now, those fish will come off in that shallow water. you got to be real patient. Yeah, this, in these conditions with the sun off the water, everything, no. I've got a four weight, but most. Oh, there's that big Yeah, fish. I saw him that time. Three feet below the riffle. I'm going to be a little bit. Oh, there he that's is. That's right, he may come over. That's big fish. Yeah, we got to get up. Now, rather than stretch this cast, we know where he is. You know, another problem you have this time of year, you got a bunch of leaves in the water with that wind. Oh, there we go. We've got a little bit of a break in the wind. They won't be able to help themselves, Zach. I'm going to still try. One of the things I want to do is those, a lot of those fish are just like right over. Ah. See, I'm down here, and when I'm casting, the wind's catching me and, and taking me. Whoop. I don't know what that was. That wasn't you. OK. Now, right now, we got a good float I'm coming down this one. Oh, got him. All right. What do you think, John Barr? Well done, Jack. Yeah. You know, that algae did wonders. <laughs> it sure did. Not a big fish, but big enough. Good drive. Good to have better. Just the idea of it, you know? That's it. An 18. We got to exercise some kind of cautious. Caution, I mean. Now come down here and look at this critter. I would like that. I'll let you uh, grab him for me. We left the net back up on the bank. We'll just well, go, these on a these on a three weight are just. We'll just wonderful. go mono mono a mono here. There he is. Beautiful fish. Right. Any great? Beautiful fish. Okay. When we finished fishing, we got together and started talking fly patterns. And we decided we'd meet in the summer of 2005 and film a fly tying video together where he would talk about his fly patterns and how to tie them. I would then go back to Jackson Hole and film the same type of video with my favorite flies. Well, now you've seen the fishing, and we've been down to Boulder, Colorado to tie flies with We're going to be using a 1x heavy hook and we're going to use brown 6 aught thread and we're going to already lay a base of thread as you can see right now. We're going to be using some closed cell foam. You can see it's uh, about medium thickness and we're going to trim it to be just a little longer than the shank. We can measure it up against the shank here and we want it to go a little bit beyond that. So we're going to tie it in. Now at first I'm using some big wraps and crossing back and forth. Now you notice the eye of the hook is right there and we're going to go right up to the eye. Now eventually we're going to trim that down and shape it. 
But for now, we pretty much have it up to the eye. We're going to go back and forth. In each wrap, I'm going to add a little bit more pressure. Back and forth, and it'll compress the foam so it's on nice and tight, and it will not uh, rotate on you. Now we see that the foam is nice and compressed. We have plenty of wraps of thread on it, and we're ready to cut the uh, back part of the foam. Now we're going to shape it. I'm going to tilt it here so you can see it. And you can come up with your own designs on how to shape this bottom uh, part of the ant. You don't want to have it too long. It, uh, I think when we finish the fly, you'll understand why. We're going to use some uh, olive-colored crystal flash chenille. And we're going to tie it in. And then we're going to take a saddle. This is a light dun. It can even be a dark dun. But I use dun. You, can, you could also substitute uh, grizzly hackle, too. But I like the dun. We're going to tie it in and then move our thread to the front. Now, we're going to grasp the chenille and move it forward, just like that, right up. We're going to leave a little space here. So you notice this right here, just a little bit of space, about three quarters of the way down the shank. And we're going to trim, tie it off. And at the same time, you don't even need any hackle pliers. You have the, if you have a saddle long enough, you're going to wrap it forward, just like this. Want a little bit of hackle there. Looks like a woolly worm with foam underneath it. Trim off our hackle. We have another piece of closed cell foam, a dark brown, that we're going to lay on top. We've already trimmed it out. We're going to lay it right on just like this. Make a couple loose wraps until we have it in position. Make sure that it's a little bit beyond uh, the body part of the foam, the tan foam. And then we're going to tighten it up with a couple, three more wraps. Now we're going to use some um, round rubber legs, dark brown, and this is medium size, and I've cut four of them just in one big cut, and about two inches. And we're going to take one of those, separate it right from the group. Now we're going to lay it right in to the side of the body, just like that. Make one wrap to make sure the, that the legs separate just like that. You don't want to have one up and one down, but if they're put in properly, they'll be just coming straight out of the body. Now we'll make a couple wraps to tighten it up. Now they, make, they may start to come in on you like this, and that means it's kind of slipped in there, so you may have to bring your thread up over like that and move them around. You don't want them to have them right tight together. Okay, now we're going to get another one just like, and we've already, of course, got the same size because we cut them all at once. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Lay it in. Make, a, make one wrap. Now, one thing you got to watch is to make sure you don't wrap your thread around like that underneath the hook. So, once you get it in and you feel like you have it in position, then wrap about three or four more wraps. And then take a look at your legs and make sure that they're all in place. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to take our thread and advance it through the body, just like that, right up to the front where we have this little space. At the same time, we're going to pull our foam forward and tie it down, kind of like a hump back there. And we'll build kind of a base in there. And make sure that you take your thread back to this tan underbody, just like that. Ah, that looks good. Almost looks like a sandwich right there. Now, what we're going to do, now what we're going to do is cut some pearl crystal flash. It's going to be an underwing. How many strands? Well, if you want to count them out, it's going to be about 25 strands. If you don't want to count them out and not take about two hours to tie this fly, just a nice little group. Kind of measure it up against maybe half the gap width will help you in how many you need. All right, we're going to lay it in so that it... Now, the nice thing about this, if you get it too long, you can always trim it. Now, we're going to tie it in and make sure it doesn't twist on you. It's very important. A couple loose wraps, make sure it's right up on top, 
and you spread it out a little bit, it shouldn't be beyond uh, the tail part of this fly. So you want to just come and just trip it, trim it up a little bit like that. Now we're going to get some elk hair. This is some light uh, elk body hair. And we're going to trim them out. And this again is going to take a little practice for you. You want to also stack it too. We're going to we're going to stack it here. We have a nice bunch of elk hair, about the gap width. We're going to put it in our stacker. Drop it in. Stack it, and it's going to come back up nice and even. I'm going to grab it and then lay it in. Now, before you lay it in, grab a hold of the ends and make sure you get all all the loose little hair, guard hairs and fur out of that. You can also comb it out if you have one of the little dubbing combs. A couple loose wraps. Now I'm going to add a little bit of water-based cement. It's very flexible cement. And we're going to put it in and let it penetrate. Why it's penetrating, while the glue is drying, I'm going to add a little wax and some Arizona Crystal Rabbit olive color. And we're going to just dub it right on. And dub it on fairly loose. I'm dubbing in this Arizona Crystal Rabbit and we're going to tie it in covering up the thread. And it's going to help anchor the hair. Now at this point we can roll over this foam and then tie it down. Now you can notice we've got a large piece of that foam hanging there. I'm going to turn it so you can see it a little bit better. We're going to come in and trim it just like that. And tie a few more wraps. Now we're ready to add the front legs. Can't have a ant with legs on the back and not the front. So we're going to reach around. We should have two legs left. And we're going to put them right in on the side, lay them in. And you'll get, the more you tie these, the more you'll get where you can put them in equally. Other than the first time, you're going to have to kind of play with it with that first tie before you tie it in with your anchoring wraps. Now we're going to go to the other side. You should only have one leg remaining now. We don't want to make this into a cripple, so we're going to put legs on the other side. Nice loose wrap until we get it on. Make sure that it's nice and even. And tie it down. Now you got to watch that you don't do that. Tie down that back leg because you've got legs going everywhere. At that point, you can kind of take a look at your fly. Make sure everything looks right. And you're going to bring your thread forward. Make one wrap right in between the foams and then the other wrap in front of the eye. And we'll get a, our whip finish and whip it off and that will complete the fly. And we'll take a look at our Amy's ant. There it is. Now it, it doesn't look like any ant. Uh, my daughter actually who I named this fly to said dead ants don't have uh, eight legs and she's right but this really is to imitate a stone fly. The Chernobyl ant is just what the name says. Chernobyl ant means it's a mutant ant. <laughs> Hung around Russia too long. This was the winning fly in the Jackson Hole One fly. The Frontier International Anglers uh, used this fly uh, exclusively to win the 1999 One fly here at Jackson Hole. It's a terrific fly. You can use it for any kind of terrestrial. It'll work great for you.